I have the privilege today of uh, us all dedicating this young man here, his family wanting to uh, give their lives to raising these children, this child. Uh, now, I was told that we have sisters. Okay, who's who? Farrah and Ava. Very good, very good. Now, this applies to you guys too. I may not say your names, but this applies to you guys too. Now, who's the young man right here? George. Very nice to meet you, George. He's like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> but, uh, but this also applies to everyone that has children, grandchildren today. Uh, we are going to be moving around a little bit in our Bibles. Uh, uh, those of you that grew up in church as a kid, you all remember the sword drills as a child. You know, pastor or somebody say a, a book of the Bible and a chapter and you have to Find it real quick, jump up, and then you have to read the passage. So every time uh, I point at Ronnie, he's got to read the passage every time. <laughs> you know, <Man>. no, I go. <laughs> Take us all day, they won't run. Rylan, uh, I, I wrote down Rylan here, but I, I understand you prefer Buck. Uh, I would probably say Ryan, Rylan or Buck if you put okay? All right. Um, Rylan and Shannon have come here today with their baby, Paul and Rylan. Uh, Hall and Ryland Horn to dedicate him to the Lord. They've made it clear that they want to raise him in church to teach him how to live for and in the name of Jesus. Now they are surrounded by their family, Harlan's grandparents, Ronnie, Lisa, Staten, and uh, Connie and Victor Dowdy. Also, they have their great grandparents, James and Judy Staten, uh, and of course they have uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and all that's. Supportive, and that's what we need to raise a child. You need a village. Uh, they say that uh, uh, it takes a village to raise a child, or it takes a family to raise a child. One person on their own uh, struggles their whole life. But when a family comes together, as you all have this morning, when a family comes together to raise a child or grandchild, uh, then that child has a fighting chance uh, to make it in the world. Uh, but of course, also, uh, we know that if he is able, Jimbo is watching alongside with Harlan Horn Sr. as well. Uh, we know that uh, Jimbo had a hard time. He wanted to see the baby born. Uh, but of course, the Lord wanted him to come on home. Uh, the Lord said it was time for him to uh, quit suffering here on the earth, come on home and enjoy his rest in Christ. Now, I'm going to ask that you two will please stand And just for a couple of minutes, the two of us together. And I got a couple of instructions for you. And it, it, this is mainly, it's no legalities here, nothing like that. But this is mainly to ingrain in your mind that you have committed this. So if you will, please, please state your names. And then your son's name. Very good. And... Both of you are here on your own free accord, and you are wanting to dedicate Rylan unto the Lord Jesus, correct? Very good. Okay, you guys can be seated. Now, by coming forward and stating your name, you're showing verbally and by your actions your desire to raise uh, uh, Harlan for the Lord. All right. If you will, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we will get into His message for the day. Heavenly Father, I thank You so much. Uh, for Rylan and Shay, uh, Shannon bringing their children here, their son, their two daughters, and uh, even George, Lord, we're glad to have him here with us as well. And Father, I just oh, I, I want to ask that you will just bless them. Bless the family. Lord, I ask that you'll just place your loving hand on them from, from here on out until uh, you take them home, or, 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 or uh, Rylan and, and the girls and, and, and George uh, grow up to have their own families, Lord, and their own children. Lord, even still, the, the grandparents and parents will still need to be a part of their family. Uh, Lord, help them to understand that You desire them more than they desire You. That You love them more than we could ever love You. So Father, I ask that You will just be with us as we go through this message. Help us to understand the love that You have for Your children. It's the same love that we need to have for our In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I've got a handful of points that I want to talk to, uh, to you all about today. Uh, these that I discuss today will be only, will not only be for just uh, Shannon and Rylan, 
But it's going to be for everyone, as I said earlier, that has children, that maybe will have children here in the uh, future. When you come before the Lord and before the church and make these vows of dedication, they are not to be taken lightly. Remember, uh, uh, you have to remember who is the adult in this relationship. You are. You guys are the adult. We have a little baby that knows no better. They, he knows uh, only that he's hungry, he's tired, and that when he screams, he can get it all taken care of sometimes. Or maybe a dirty diaper every now and then. Uh, but it, 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 the adults are the ones that have to uh, uh, give him the food that he needs, put on the, the clean clothes, the clean diaper, uh, plan for his future. He doesn't know this stuff. So you guys have, have to be the adults in the relationship. We live in a society, though, where the Peter Pan syndrome is alive and well. But for the sake of the children, I think I even talked, to, uh, talked about this last week, those of you that were here last week, uh, that we need to grow up. Uh, we as adults need to grow up and be adults in this society today. We see in what's going on around the United States of where uh, kids, uh, adults are being kids. Kids never have been taught they need to grow up. They need to be a part of society, not tearing them down. And also you have the reverse of that is to treat children like little adults. He can't go out and get a job. He can't go up to McDonald's and order his food yet. So we have to teach him and take care of him and show him how to grow up to be a good citizen of the United States, a good adult, and a, and a good Christian as he grows up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Proverbs 22.15 says, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. But the rod of discipline will drive it far from him. 23.13 says, Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. I'll get to talk about that in just a little bit. But remember that every parent-child relationship, there are two sinners. The adult, the parent, and the child. Or, in this case, three. The father, the wife, and the child. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. I am saved by the grace of God. And we have to understand that Rollins going to make... Uh, uh, bad choices. He's going to mess up. Raise your hand if you never made a bad choice your whole life. Especially as a kid trying to grow up, figure things out. That's right. We make bad choices. We mess up. And remember, the best legacy that you can leave doesn't involve money. The best legacy that you can leave, uh, Rylan, as a dad, is that we want him to grow up knowing Jesus. Not just giving him all the things that we didn't have as a kid. Because remember, if we give him everything that he doesn't have, that we didn't have as a kid, he won't have enough time for anything else. Give him what he needs. Spoil him every now and then. Grandparents, great grandparents. It, when you can spoil him. There's no problem with that. But he needs love. He needs nurturing. He needs you to be in his life. Now, Deuteronomy 23, verse 21 says, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, or keep the vow. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it should be sin in thee. Verse 23 says, That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. So if you guys come forward and saying that you want to dedicate uh, uh, Harlem here, to the Lord, to the Lord Jesus. This is a vow that you have made before the Lord. And He doesn't take these things lightly. Now I want you to also to understand that Jesus loves Harlem more than you do. The Bible says Jesus loves the little children. You guys will turn to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Now, you all know the song that we sang as kids. And kids probably sing it now. Children's church and Sunday school. Uh, uh, this song is not only for the children to sing, but for all to sing. For we are all the children of God. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the ch little children of the world. Now just realize this, that Jesus loves kids so much. Because Kids a lot of times don't get a chance. They don't have a fighting chance. They, they don't necessarily have the opportunity, like we as adults, to make decisions. A lot of times uh, those decisions, life-changing decisions, are made for us. 
So we have to understand that no matter what happens in especially a child's life, Jesus loves you very much. Not only is there the song we sing, but we read there in Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 and verse 13, says, And they brought young children, children to Him, that He should touch them, and His disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, He was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto Me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Throughout the ages, godly parents have presented their children to the Lord in dedication. You guys follow a noble heritage. In presenting your child to the Lord, you enter into, into a solemn relationship with God who keeps his covenant to a thousand generations there in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, while dedicating your child is a worthy fact, you must understand that it offers no salvation. By, by saying that I dedicate my child to the Lord does not mean that he will get saved. Now, I do believe there is an age of accountability that from this age until he is able to choose right from wrong, until he is able to choose whether or not he wants to be saved to accept Jesus as his Savior, same thing for you guys, until you are able to choose, I, I truly believe that if anything, God forbid, if anything were to happen, he would go to heaven. But when he becomes that age, when children become old enough to, to make that choice, then they are held accountable, and they have to make that choice themselves. He's not going to be saved just because you guys are, okay? Uh, dedication does not guarantee your child's salvation, for salvation requires a personal commitment that each one must make on his own upon reaching the age of awareness. This is different with each child. Each child's age is different. Uh, the, the Jewish people choose 12, uh, and 12 is uh, the age that they become adults, and they can go out and get a job, and they uh, give uh, and help support their family. But in our society, we understand that it could be five years old. It could be eight years old. It actually could be uh, as a teenager until they're able to choose and understand exactly. Once a child is able to choose Jesus, then they can be saved. Okay? Uh, no two are alike in looks, actions, or maturity, and that goes for age of awareness also, or the age of accountability is what the Bible talks about. Though dedication does not save, it is nonetheless a very significant act of faith and declaration of intent by the parents to provide Christian nurture to the child. You are dedicating your lives to teach your ch child and children to love Jesus. And he has a fighting chance of coming to know Jesus as his personal Savior. By, by you guys loving Jesus, by you guys wanting to share Jesus with him, he has a chance to come to know the Lord as a Savior. Now, I charge you both in the presence of God and in your family, the rest of this congregation, to love your child as much as your own life. Never allow Harlan or even his sisters or little cousin George, never allow them to think that you don't love them. Never allow them to have any doubts of the depths of your love for them. I also charge you to love and obey God. Let them see in your life evidences of the working of your personal Savior. Make spiritual things the topic of conversation. Just like this morning when you wake up, wow, God has given us a beautiful day. Just like I said earlier when I said that God cleared the sky out for us. Back at the house, it was cloudy, foggy. I mean, you couldn't, I could barely see you guys if it was like that either. But praise the Lord, He cleared it out for us so that we could have a good morning, a good service. Make God the focus of family life and the basis for personal development. Play Christian songs. Play gospel songs. Uh, when you're playing these songs, you don't realize how much children learn and listen just from music. So as you're playing Christian songs, good godly songs, they will hear this and they will be singing this and they will understand this. Also, teach your children to obey. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Ephesians 6, 1-3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. You all know what that promise was? That if you obeyed your parents, there's a promise? The promise is that, you would, uh, that the children would live long. <laughs> if the children disobeyed their parents in the days of, uh, of the Old Testament age, uh, parents would take their children outside the gates and stone them. Now, of course, that would be uh, on an uh, ongoing basis, but they would not allow children to just be disobedient and be unruly. Now, of course, we don't do that today, but we do other things. Uh, God has and always will stress obedience, not only to the parents, but to God Himself. Uh, and now I'm not talking about we need to take our kids out back and beat them every day. I'm not saying that. Uh, now, some maybe. I bet Ronnie got beat every day. Probably needed it, but <laughs> Judy says, oh yeah, he needs it now. <laughs> Uh, but if a child is disobedient to his or her parents, he surely won't obey God in His commandments. Which means there's got to be some discipline. There's got to be some kind of discipline. You must discipline your child, your children. Uh, don't let one always be the bad guy, though. Uh, uh, Shannon, you can't tell Paul and say, wait till your daddy gets home. Or, or, or uh, uh, Rylan, uh, you can't say, well, are you going to whip him or what? You know, you guys have to do it together. You guys have to decide how you're going to discipline your children and, and then be consistent. And always back the other one up when it comes to discipline. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 24, now this is from the New Living Translation, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Now, but, Riley, you are the father. The Bible has specific directions for you. Ephesians chapter four, uh, 6 and verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Meaning, don't always just tease them and aggravate them and, 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 and cause them to be angry all the time. Sometimes we, as, especially men, uh, sometimes we take it out on those that we love the most. We have a bad day, we have a terrible day at work, uh, uh, going too fast, trying to get to work because we're late, we get a ticket, which it makes us late, we get a ticket, whatever the case is. By the time we get home, the day is terrible, and we end up taking it out not only on our wife, but our children as well. Moms do the same thing. You're not getting by with that either. But, I mean, but men, a lot of times, we don't, we don't always let it go. And sometimes we take it out on our kids, and we're not supposed to. Because they're not built to handle that. They're not made for that. They are made to grow up as a kid and, and learn to love and play and learn how life really is and the love that God has for them. Rylan, you are the head of the house and your children should see you worshiping and praying to Jesus. God expects you to be strong. Shannon, uh, uh, to, uh, and your children should never doubt that you love God and that you love them. There must be a willingness on your part to place their welfare ahead of your own. Your life should draw your children like a magnet to the Lord Jesus. Now, Shannon, of course we all know you're the mother. You are to maintain an open, <laughs> open and gentle and loving relationship with Rylan and your children. The Bible says that you are to obey your husband. Uh, be submissive. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not equal with him. <laughs> This does not mean that you are not equal with him, but the thing is, Rylan, that she is submissive to you in that she allows you to make the decisions, but you are held accountable for the decisions of the family. In God's eyes, if Shannon makes a bad decision, it's you that made the bad decision. So, in a sense, you two are to do it together. And you submit to your husband, but you come together as one. You come together knowing that in the decisions you make, not only affect you, but it affects your children as well. Shannon, you are to be uh, maintain an open, gentle, and loving relationship with Rylan and your child. You are you are to love, concern, and uh, teaching. I'm sorry. Your love, concern, and teaching will be a major factor in your child coming to know. Jesus at an early age. So you loving Him 
will help him to understand how Jesus loves him as well. Now, to Roland and Shannon both, just a couple of questions. Believing that Harlan is a gift from God and that God will hold you accountable for him, do you now solemnly confess that it is your purpose to dedicate him to the Lord and to teach him to fully serve Jesus? Will you faithfully discharge your God-given responsibilities as parents as outlined in God's Word? Will you pray with Him and for Him, instructing Harlan faithfully in the teaching, teachings of God's Holy Word? Teach him to read God's Word at an early age. Read to him. Read the Bible. Uh, uh, get a, a, a biblical storybook and read to him. So he, he hears these stories. And he knows how God loves not only him, but his whole family. And my last question is, will you faithfully take him to a place of worship? Do all you can to bring him to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you will, say I will. Thank you. All right. Now I'm going to, because I have touched my face and mouth, I'm going to fly. Get this dried off before we go on. <laughs> All right, if you wouldn't mind, let me have him. We're not going anywhere. If you guys will, let's go to the Lord in order for us, okay? <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for allowing us to be able to, to, to take Paul in here, presenting before you, dedicating him to you. Uh, Father, it's like a sacrifice being given to you because uh, 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 Rylan and Shannon have to sacrifice their lives because of this little young man right here. They have to uh, understand that they are going to want to live for Jesus so that Harlan will grow up living for Jesus. Father, I know you have great plans for him. You have his life planned out perfectly, and if he will just choose to live for you, then his life will be a great life, a testament for the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you will just help uh, not only uh, Rollin and Shannon, but the whole family. Lord, I ask that you would just touch each one, their lives, to be uh, a, a, a standard for Harlan to live for, that standard being Jesus. Father, I ask that you will uh, uh, just help the family to support each other, lift each other up. And, and when there's problems, when, when, when the parents fail or the child messes up, and, uh, Lord, the, the, the family is there to lift them up and to help them. Father, we just give Harlan to you and ask that you would just bless him the rest of his life. That you see this name of Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Now, if I could have the family just kind of maybe get up closer. My two deacons, if you guys will, come with me. If my two deacons can come right behind these two. If you wouldn't mind coming up here with me. And then if everybody else will just kind of gather around and still try to social distance. What I would prefer if, it, if we weren't in the middle of all this mess, that we would, uh, I would be able to lay hands on you guys and then we would just kind of come together as one. But since we are in the middle of this, then uh, uh, we're not going to do that. But I would like for our congregation to come on up. As close as you're able to. Wives, if you want to get with your uh, deacons, wives, if you want to get with them, I'm sorry I should have told them to come on as well.
Guys, I do it this way because I want you to know that not only is your family here to support you, but the church is as well. We are here for you. Uh, it may seem like sometimes, especially in the past, uh, pastors and preachers have um, judged people. Well, I want you to know you don't have that here. Uh, no matter what we do, uh, it, we mess up, we fail. God says it's okay. God says it's okay. Just, I'll help you pick, it, pick yourself up. I'll help you get back going and just start over first of all. Just understand that God that isn't, that doesn't condemn us when we fail. He's loved. Hey okay, guys, it's all just, um, you guys are holding hands and then you can hold your hands up or just pray with me if you will, please. <laughs> Heavenly Father, again, I want to just thank you. Thank you for this family and what they mean to me, the whole family. Uh, Father, I thank you for uh, uh, Rylan and Shannon and Harlan and, and, and then, uh, the, the girls and, and the cousin, Lord, and the whole family. Lord. I just thank you for them and I ask that you will please just uh, bless them, Lord. Not only today, not only from the service, but from here on out, Lord, I ask that you would just become real to them. That you would just uh, uh, open their eyes of their heart, their mind, to see you in everything that happens in their life. And they understand that, that you want to be a part of their life. That you want uh, uh, for, to have a relationship with them. Father, you love them as your own child. Jesus, we know that you loved us so much that you spread your arms across that cross. And you paid the price so that we wouldn't have to. You died so that I wouldn't have to. Father, you, you sent Jesus, your only begotten Son, because you love me. Because you love Harlan. Because you love Sarah. Because you love Ava. Because you love George. Because you love the whole family. Because you love the whole world. So that we wouldn't have to die and go to hell. So we could spend eternity with you. So Father, I ask that you will just be with the family as they celebrate this life, as they, as they live their life raising Harlan and the girls. And I ask that you will, please, be with them, love them. In Jesus' name we call. Amen. Thank you, guys.